Hello and welcome to one of the how-to videos in the series. In this video we're going to show you how to transform a G39 into any other G39. I'll be showing how to change out the front guard, the stock, the outer barrel and the inner barrel. Um, my G39 RAS with the rail system is K-length as the C-type stock. Um, the K length upper barrel um, with the K length and the K style uh, flesh, flesh hider, muzzle, whatever you want to call that. Everything else is um, the same as on any other G39. So that's the parts that are over here. Over here we have the IDZ stock with the um, top rail that comes with it. Um, I'll be using these later to show you some hybrid models, i.e. the long barrel with the RES type um, front guard and you can do something with a silencer and although I don't think you, know, you won't be able to put the silencer on the K-length barrel and put the E-type handguard over that but because the front hole is too small but um, we'll give you some nice ideas. Um, stock may look the same, but is slightly longer. So on the E-type, it's it's really nice to shoulder it. The K-type is really nice to shoulder, although it is a bit shorter. It's good for indoor, etc., etc. Now, how, how we're gonna start off? We're gonna start off by moving everything so I have room here. And we're going to start off with the back of the gun, first magazine out, make sure that it's empty. First of all, I'm going to start on the back, get a pin or a knocker pin or a screwdriver. I always use screwdrivers as hammers and uh, knock throughs. From bottom to top, knock out the pin, comes out, push the button and the stock comes free. Install the new stock, push it in, put the button, the pin back in, and look at that. It's one of the fastest and easiest mods you can do to any of the G39s. IDZ stock has the same procedure, just ends uh, with a different result of course. Now to get the interesting part, to get pin out, you could place it aside, you could put it in the stock. Even the IDZ stock has holes to put the pins in. Slide forward. Put that aside. And something special on the K type on the RAS type that does not come with the K, the C or the E type is this little block right here. And this stabilizes the outer barrel within the RAS. And um, if you're going to put this outer barrel in a K-type or a C-type or an E-type um, front grip, you need to take this block off because it will be in your way. Right, so continuing, get a screwdriver or a barrel nut wrench. I use a screwdriver, it works fine. Place it in the slot and unlock that, break it free, twist it off, outer barrel will come off. Like that. Now there's a few parts on here. We have um, the back part that centers and keeps it in line up straight. The barrel nut. Now in here we have the um, spring rod, what I call it, the piston, which just slides in there. Normally there is a little spring in front of that even, but I kind of lost that. Plate that goes on the back. And that plate is quite important. That plate goes show you guys, in here, there's a little slot, and it just sits in like that. But it's better to take it out before it falls out on its own. Right, so in front of that we have the um, center block, the gas block, and the flash hider. This one's loose, I'm going to take it off, just because I like to take it off. The um, conversion kits come with their own uh, flash hider 
So if you have, um, for instance, the E-Type has a different flash hider. So it comes with a different flash hider. Right, now, next part is going to be, um, I'm going to take off the back part here. On the top, there's a little Allen screw, 1.5 millimeter. Unscrew that. Don't completely unscrew it, just a few turns, and that should come off. Place that aside. Off comes the barrel nut, and then on the bottom of the centering block, another screw. Just that loose. Take that off. I often don't even put it back on, even when I use the RES front grip, because although it stabilizes and it's nice and snug, I don't really like it because it's just a pain to get off and on every time. Knock out the pin on the bottom of the gas block and the gas block slides off too. Don't lose a pin. Okay, so we're going to change to the other outer barrel. As you can see with the nice flash hider, which I like more than the original one. And this time is just basically the going backwards of what we did earlier. Line up the gas block, get the pin in. Knock the pin flat. As you can see, I'm not using a hammer. Just to show you that you don't need a hell of a lot of tools to get the job done. I often use screwdrivers to knock things in or out. And my screwdrivers have seen and known a lot of pain in the process. Right. Let me think a bit, get the barrel on. Make sure you put it on right, because if you put it on backwards, it will not screw in, which is logic. And um, then get the back part back on. Also make sure that, well, it's, it's really hard to put this on backwards. Um, it's not even possible, I think. Get that on. It's nice and snug. Tighten down the screw. You might notice that I'm not putting on the centering block because the E-Type does not need that. Right, so that's that. Change out the short spring uh, pin with the long spring pin. Um, because this one, well, the outer barrel, the gas block, is more in front on the E-Type outer barrel than on the K. And I think the C-Type also uses a short one. Or even shorter. So. Um, change those out. I'm gonna put that aside. Now we're gonna work on the inner barrel. Flip over the stock. Wait, Ooh. the mask is <laughs> going too fast. First, take out the pins. Always important to take out the pins. Flip down the magazine well trigger group. They come out nicely. Nothing's gonna pop out at you. Just pull them out. Pull over the stock. Take the back plate. Push it down and out. Take out the back plate with the recoil spring, slide the bolt back, and slide the inner barrel with hop up assembly back. Body and stock can be put aside. I'm on fire today. 1.5 millimeter Allen wrench on the top of the hop up unit. It's a big metal block that goes over it. Simply unscrew that a bit and that block comes off now the adjuster wheel comes off and you can see that the lever is free to go so the hop up nub that's in there make sure you do not lose that um, I'd like to keep it in at all times on the left hand side of the hop up chamber there's a hole small, uh, small Phillips head screw undo that and the hop unit will break open. Alright, just take out the barrel really nicely. And then you have the hop-up nub and the lever. You're probably not going to see that from all the way over there, but just showing. Maybe I'll get some pictures in. Take off the hop-up rubber. Take the other outer barrel, which is significantly longer and should give you more accuracy and more power. 
Not that we need more power if you have an MPAS kit, but it should get me probably, I haven't chronoed it yet, but should get me over 500 FPS. Get the ridge in the help of rubber, align it, put it on, make sure it's seated well, place it into the hop up here net, and now to put the knob back in. This is some fiddly, fiddly part that the lever, slide the lever back in and get the two halves together. Screw them tight and screw the screw back in. Again, do not over tighten the screw. I've seen this many times, but with a small screwdriver like this, it's really hard to over tighten it. Right, make sure the hop up nub is still in. Put the adjuster arm back on, or the um, dial. I like to set it to less, the least amount of hop up because that still is quite a lot of hop up. Get the block in, you'll see that on the top side. It just slides on, you cannot put it on crooked, you can put it on upside down, but um, make sure the screw is on the top side, screw the screw back in, you don't have to tighten this really hard because it's just a locking screw, it's not supposed to be tight. As soon as this is tight, it's not coming off, it will not come off. And now we can install it back into the gun, make sure it goes through the right holes. Get the feeding area on the bottom, of course. Slide that in. Get the bolt behind it. The spring rod. The recoil spring and stuff like that. Flip open the back. Trigger group and magazine well. Click those in place and then put the pins in. It's a really nice gun to work on, it's, it's quite easy. Now to get the front barrel back on, you need to do a few things. First get this assembly, the piston, the spring uh, rod and the back plate, get that ready and put the back plate in its place. This is quite important. So then you have something that should look like this. Something like that. Now just hold the gun upright and slide the outer barrel from front to back over it, making sure that the piston enters the gas block hole and it should slide right over. Now get the barrel nut. into position and screw it on if you would like to it would be nice if it was a bit cooperative come on mate make sure you don't cross thread make sure the cap the threads are aligned it should free turn straight on it should not be tight from the beginning um, if it is, don't screw it any further or you will damage your gun. Get nice and tight. Again, don't over and tighten. And um, that's the outer barrel. Now just slide on the full guard. It's going to be a bit of a pain with that thickening. Slide that on. Get the pin in. I have the idea that the pin that comes with, if you buy the gun as an E-type, I have the idea that the pin is longer because it does not protrude out of the body on the other side as the other pins do and as the pin does on the RES front guard. Right, so right now we have an E-type with the nice free floating bipod. 
it's quite a long gun right now and um, it's really nice for to have it on the bipod for those precision shots as a gas blowback you're probably not gonna shoot it uh, full automatic for a very long time having only 30 rounds of mag and stuff like that bipod folds in very nicely right so um, I'm gonna set up the gun now for some hybrid models and I'll show you those as I make them right so this one came to me in an epiphany or a complete failure uh, I just thought well if we take off the top rail to have good access to the charging handle in every possible way and with the RES front guard you still have a, that little rail on top to mount a red dot scope or sight and I have to say that it's not that bad although it of, of course I'm gonna give you the point that it doesn't look like anything it's not pretty but you know and I have to say to line up the red dot with your eye it's actually better because it's a bit lower now than it would be when it's on the top rail so um, given that it's actually pretty nice to shoulder um, although it doesn't look like much um, give you the details we got the RES outer grip and front grip and the E-type front barrel um, and the IDZ stock the red dot side I have on there is a Walter multi red dot side looks like the one in Call of Duty 4 for all you fanboys it has seven levels of illumination and four sizes of dot only red dot, no green dot or no different crosshairs we have the very long 300mm silencer the E-type outer barrel a Tokyo Marui C-type uh, front guard with a Harris bipod on it the IDZ top rail with a sniper scope and the IDZ stock this gun is now very very long considerably longer than M16 um, though I think if you take the silencer off it will be about the same size as an M16 or maybe a bit shorter but um, this setup with the um, shorter C-type front grip gives you a lighter setup than when you would use a the E-type with a, a um, included bipod also this bipod is a bit lower so if you're going prone this might be a bit more for those snipers and DMRs out there and um, yeah, the Z-Stock gives a very good very good grip, a very nice shoulder feel also has the um, option to raise or lower the cheek piece um, scope's gonna give you some nice a nice view of your target and stuff like that and given that the G39 even the C length inner barrel and this smaller inner barrel um, already gives quite a nice accuracy the E type E type accuracy with a length of 495 millimeters that's close to 20 inch of barrel is giving exquisite accuracy and um, I actually can't wait to shoot this because I haven't shot it yet <laughs> I just got it in the mail a few days ago and I haven't got the chance yet to test fire it to chrono it even um, but it should be very 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 tight groupings um, um, if you put the long stock, the E-type stock with the um, short barrel the C-type barrel for instance and um, well yeah you could just put on anything you want get the C-type um, the C-type barrel with the E-type flash hider um, get the C-type outer barrel, the short one, get the RES type um, front guard over that and put small silencer so that the 
front actually you see the bit of silencer disappear into the handguard that's pretty nice I have a picture on a third picture here of my um, Tokyo Marui with this front guard on with a uh, silencer on and that's the setup I'm talking about that's really nice very tactical um, and of course if you have this or the C-type with the side rails you can put on longer rails and you can put on anything you want lasers, pack boxes um, although that would be stupid on a gas blowback rifle but um, lasers, flashlights, bipods, foregrips um, matter of fact let me just get, give you an example of how this could look with a foregrip on instead of a bipod because of course when you're using bipods you have to think of you're not going very high paced you're not combat sniping you're, you're basically camping out there C type off as you can see I'm not putting on the um, the centering block that um, this block right here. I came with the RAS kit or gun, if you please. So put that on. Yeah, a foregrip. Typical GMP foregrip, you know, you all, I think all of you will have one of these. Mine just in tan. Get it on there. Real quick silencer back on. Or you can put a small silencer on there. It's also a possibility. Small silencer. All barrels are well WEG39 barrels are 14 millimeter counterclockwise threads. Which is quite interesting. So you can just swap out all um, flash hiders and silencers and stuff you can have it's all swappable that's a nice word swappable so as you can see right now maybe the sniper scope's a bit over the top now so take off the sniper scope and you can put on a ACOG scope So, like this, you have a very light weapon, which is very accurate, very high power, light, semi-automatic, good optics. Actually, the number of options is kind of unlimited. Um, yeah, it's really nice. So I'm gonna leave you here because this video is going to become very, very long, hey guys. So see you in the next video. Oh, and please subscribe. Thank you.